Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. you cooked up such a big batch? You fixing to tonic the whole town of Beverly Hills? That's just a starter. Then I'm going to commence on the rest of the country. Everybody? No, just the Democrats and the Republicans. They need tonic, do they? Why, Jed, they is in such bad shape, one party can't walk and the other one can't even stand up. Who told you that? They did. I've been watching the TV. The Republicans claim that the Democrats is dragging their feet. And the Democrats come back and say that the Republicans ain't got a leg to stand on. You got to remember, Granny, come election time, them two parties says a lot of things about each other. That's why I ain't taking no chances. I'm tonic on both sides. I'm glad to see you ain't partial. <laughs> I'll say this. You get enough of your tonic into them two parties, and this country's gonna have one rip-snorting election. That's why I made it extra strong this year. I figured a little will have to go a long way. Now go ahead, help yourself. Well, I tell you, Granny, uh, you ought to go first. It's your tonic. Yeah. I have been feeling a little stove up lately. A little achy in the joints, and not too spry. Well, probably city living. Probably. Well, <laughs> Here's looking at you, Jed. <laughs> Granny, you ain't looking at me. <laughs> water. I gotta have water. That tells me folks are gonna talk about this election for years to come. <laughs> And if at first glance this tax burden might seem somewhat staggering, I feel certain that... Excuse me, I'm sorry. I told you no interruptions. I told you no interruptions. But it's Mrs. Drysdale. It's Mrs. Drysdale. And she insists on talking to her husband. She insists on... I heard the original. Tell her I'm not in. He's not in. Every time that woman gets on the telephone, the whole day is shot. But she... No buts. No buts. <laughs> it's talk, talk, talk. Always the same story. Oh, Milburn, no dreadful hillbillies are at it again. Oh, Milburn, what shall I do? Oh, Milburn, come home. Oh, Milburn! <laughs> Why wasn't I told my lovely wife was here in person? Why wasn't he told his lovely wife was here in person? Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody out! While I take this beautiful creature in my arms and comfort her. Couldn't I just have a small raise instead? Oh, oh. you too. <laughs> now, what brings my lovely wife here to brighten up my dreary day? Milburn, those dreadful hillbillies, hillbillies are, are at it again. again. <laughs> well, what is it this time, dear? They're going to ruin the social event of the year. Which is? The Countess Maria von Holstein is returning to Beverly Hills. No. Yes. Well, who's she? Oh, Milton, really. The Countess Maria is the absolute unchallenged leader of the Continental Jet Set. No. Yes. Well, who are they? They're the avant-garde of international society. They jet to the Riviera for the sun, to Innsbruck for the ski, to Paris for clothes, to Las Vegas for divorces. They practically live on jet planes. Margaret. 
I can't think of two groups of people more dissimilar than the Clampets and this jerk set. Jet set. Same difference, they'll never meet. Now, I'm very busy, dear. But they will meet. The Countess has leased the mansion on the other side of the Clampets. Margaret, in cities like Beverly Hills, people can live out their whole lives without ever meeting their next door neighbor. Now, run along, dear. I am very busy. Bill, then, will you let me finish? Let you? I'll pay a cash bonus. <laughs> Granny is going about the neighborhood distributing a vile concoction she calls tonic. She left this at our house. If that little hillbilly witch doctor calls on the Countess, her ladyship may jet back to the continent. If she drinks this, she may jet back without a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Begging your ladyship's pardon, but are you quite certain you'll be able to walk? Walk? My dear Humphrey, I can fly! Thanks to this magic elixir. It's amazing. I've traveled the world searching for the secret of youth and vitality, only to find it here in this quaint, sleepy little village of Beverly Hills. <laughs> are you sure the little gypsy woman who makes this tonic lives here, in this mansion? Yes, madam. Her exact words were, howdy, neighbor, Williams lives yonder, and pointed to this house. Oh, well, as one of my husbands used to say, it takes many hounds to make the pack. <laughs> that was your fifth husband, madam, the Earl. Oh, yes, charming man. <laughs> you know, Humphrey, I may marry again, possibly an American this time. Uh, begging your pardon, madam, I don't believe there are any titled Americans. Oh, well, who cares? I've married a count. A duke, a baron, a marquis, and an earl. This time I want a man with red blood in his veins. <laughs> oh, howdy, ma'am. Uh, see you come for a refill. Step right in. Granny, lady here needs some more tonic. You know, I think I'm in love with you. Never mind, Granny, she's had enough. <laughs> hey, Granny! Granny, you hadn't ought to left this pan of tonic foam out by the kettle. Where'd it go to? Old Duke and Ellie's rabbit lapped it up. Is he all right? Oh, sure, it didn't hurt him none. But that old hound dog is sitting in the top of the elm tree, steady as a squirrel. On the top of the elm tree? Well, how did he get up there? Your rabbit chased him up. Go get him down, Ellie. Yes, I'm great. Oh, be careful, Ellie. Now, he growled at me. I ain't scared, old Duke. It wasn't Duke. It was the rabbit. I hope them Democrats and Republicans don't go to scrapping when I tonic them. Now, get a hold of yourself, ma'am. To the best of my recollections, we ain't even met before. I reckon you got me confused with somebody else. Who's she, Jed? Somebody wanting tonic? Yes. Yes, and make it a double this time. Now, hold on, Granny. <laughs> don't worry, Jed. I know that look. She'd been over tonic. <laughs> leave the room. Oh, shucks, Granny. Boy, do what your Granny said. Uh, always getting <laughs> thrown out. I'm gonna get married and have my own house and throw other folks out. <laughs> get her sitting down, Jed. I'll fetch some catnip tea. That'll work again the tonic. Uh, uh won't you uh, set a spell, ma'am? Yes. <laughs> Is she getting a hold of herself, Jed? No, Granny. So far, it's mostly me. Here. Swallow her that. Granny, I reckon you better commence cutting your tonic for city folks. Appears to be a might too powerful for them. I reckon a bet. How you feel now, ma'am? Fine, thank you. Are you the little lady who makes this tonic? I am. Oh, this here's Granny. I'm Jed Clampett, and uh, the young uns, uh, Ellie B. and Jethro, is outdoors. Oh, and Mrs. Clampett? Well, I'm a widower, ma'am. 
Well, we really must get better acquainted. I happen to be unattached. If you need hooking up, I'll do it. Well, Granny, uh, I reckon that was just a tonic of talk. I mean, I have no husband at the moment. I'm the Countess Maria. Countess? Yes. My last husband was an earl. Oh, uh, well, I got a cousin that pretty near married to Earl. Really? Yeah, Earl Scruggs, you know him? No, I don't believe so. Maybe you know his partner, Lester Flatt. <laughs> no. Well, uh, he's on the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, opera star. <laughs> yeah, down there with Minnie Pearl. Do you know her? I'm afraid not. How about the Duke of Paducah? No, no, I don't. I know several Dukes, but not that one. <laughs> just had a perfectly marvelous idea. I'll give a huge party so that your friends and my friends can get acquainted. And so can we. Well, that's uh, mighty neighborly of you, Miss Countess. Uh, or is it Ms.? Just call me Maria. Oh, Granny, instead of champagne, may I serve your tonic? Well, I don't know, Marie. <laughs> oh, please, it'll simply make the party. What do you think, Jed? Well, Granny, uh, why not? You was figuring on tonic in the whole town anyway. <laughs> Save you a heap of walking pushing that wheelbarrow. So blowing from a fountain into a huge punch bowl. We'll call it the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> Granny! Granny, Mrs. Drysdale dumped your whole kettle of tonic into the cement pond. What? All of it? Yeah, it must have been 15, 20 gallons. Who is this Mrs. Drysdale? What? She's the meanest, orneriest, no good, low down. Now, Granny, uh, you see, ma'am, Miss Drysdale is high society. Her husband is president of the Commerce Bank, and she never has cotton us living next door. I'll fix her. Please, Granny, let me have that pleasure. I know just how to deal with these so-called high society women. You won't hurt her, will you, ma'am? I promise you I won't lay a hand on her. You did what? I dumped the entire mess into their swimming pool. Margaret. Sit down and listen to me. It was you who moved those loutish hillbillies into our lovely neighborhood. Now then, it is I who shall move them out. Now, dear, let's talk this over. Sit down. The time for talk is past. It's time for action. And if you're too weak to take it, I am not. Somebody has to make Beverly Hills safe for people of breeding. Excuse me. I told you no interruptions. I told you, no interruption. Oh, sit down, Milburn. I wouldn't interrupt, but the Countess is here. The Countess? She wants to see you. Oh, Milburn, did you hear that? Stand up. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale, I presume. Oh, yes, your ladyship. <laughs> I am giving a party, and I wanted you to be the first to know about it. What an honor! Not only am I inviting the cream of Beverly Hills society, but Newport, Santa Barbara, Pasadena will be represented. I have many friends there. And, of course, members of the nobility will be jetting in from all over the continent. Oh! Lords and ladies, dukes and duchesses, perhaps a few princes, and a king and queen or two. Oh! <laughs> And now, Mrs. Drysdale, we come to my guests of honor. Those people whom I consider to be the first family of Beverly Hills. Oh, your ladyship, surely you don't mean the Drysdales? I surely don't. <laughs> I mean the Clampets. <laughs> the the, the, the Clampets? Your next door neighbors. Uh, oh, those Clampets. <laughs> oh, 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 wonderful. Uh, they're my dearest friends. <laughs> really? What a shame you're not invited to the party. <laughs> Good day. Oh, but, uh, Countess, uh, your ladyship, surely that's not your last word? No, my last word is this. If you ever tamper with another drop of Granny's tonic, I shall buy Beverly Hills and, uh, and exile the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, uh, your Countess-ship! So that's what did it. She likes Granny's tonic. <laughs> Countess called me a fat frump. It's milk. 
Melvin's fault. If he'd taken action when I told him to, this tragedy could have been averted. Milton, you spineless jellyfish. <laughs> Don't just sit there, you do something. Yes, Margaret, I think I will. Something I should have done a long time ago. <laughs> Milburn, that look. I don't like it. Milburn! What's happening? He's paddling her. Hey, listen, can I? Ooh, hot diggity dirt. How come you're so all dude it up? Because I'm going for a ride. Oh, all right, I'll get the truck. No, oh, never mind. Uh, going with a neighbor in their car. You all dressed up like that for Mr. Drysdale? It ain't Mr. Drysdale I'm going with. Mrs. Drysdale? Yes, sir. <laughs> Why don't you set up your granny's kettle so she can make another batch of tonic? Well, granny can't make no more tonic. She's done run out of yarbs and roots and berries and things. Well, then you go get her some more. Only place I can get more is back home. And that'd take a week. Well, say howdy for me while you're back there. <laughs> Uncle Jed, I'm commencing to figure something out. You don't want me around when that somebody comes to go riding with you. Because she is a woman. That's how come you're wearing your courting clothes. And shaved your face and put that smelly slickum on your hair. Jethro, I gotta admire your brain. I thank you. Now that I've admired it, get it out of here. Uncle Jed's got a sweetheart. Uncle Jed's got a sweetheart. You've got a sweetheart. Granny? Mrs. Drysdale sent me to arrange a peace conference. Granny? So this is her magic tonic. I've had a very trying day. I wonder if... Oh. Probably just sulfur and molasses. Still, it did have a rather invigorating influence on Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> invigorating. They're turning into a veritable tiger. <laughs> With a Fenwick, huh? Is that it? No, I got it. It's the Countess. Sure is shooting. Wait, she's our neighbor, and she's pretty, and she's got a car? All right, Jethro, well, that's who it is. Now run along. Hey, if you marry up with the Countess, are you going to live in one of them castles, wear one of them tin suits, fight dragons with a sword, and rescue them damsels in distress? Every day and twice on Sundays. <laughs> what in tarnation is that? I don't know, but it's getting closer. <laughs> Come here. Yeah, boy, Miss Jean called you. I know, but she's got a kind of funny look in her eyes. Yeah, I've seen that look before. <laughs> I said, come here. Jethro, you going or ain't you? Unless you come with me. I got my old problem. You find Granny and ask for some catnip tea. But I don't like catnip tea. Not for you, for her. Well, quick about it, here she comes. <laughs> There, soldier. I thought you was a countess. Her ladyship is waiting. Well, uh, reckon his manship is ready. <laughs> you guard the countess, do you? No, sir. I drive her. Driver? Yes, sir. I have driven the countess since childhood. Thirty-five years. Well, you better let up. It didn't hurt her none, but it sure got you looking old for thirty-five. <laughs> But how handsome you look. Uh, excuse me, ma'am, but uh, you ain't been on a tonic again, have you? Oh, no. I've sworn off to the party. Now, where would you like to go? Oh, I ain't Joycey. Oh! <laughs> it's all the same to you, ma'am. Could we take out after him and bring him back? Why, of course. Humphrey, catch those two immediately. 
I'll do my best, Your Ladyship. No, 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 not on foot. We'll go in the car. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Wonderful man. Terribly devoted. You wouldn't believe how old he is. I do find it hard, ma'am. <laughs> now, don't cry, Tommy. I know you're hot in your woolly coat. Here's some nice cool water for you. Ellie Mae, did you set up my kettle again? Well, yes, I'm Granny. You fixing to make up some more tonic for the Countess's party? I'm afraid I can't, child. Ain't got no more yarbs. But as long as my kettle is set up and the firewood is ready, I'm going to cook up a great big batch of chitlins for the winding. I reckon you best move there, little fella. The smoke from that fire is going to blow right over here. And a little baby like you... <laughs> What's this kitten been drinking? Well, just a little water out of the cement pond, Granny. <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. What is it, Granny? Dumping them 20 gallons of extra strong tonic in the pond has watered it down and made it just right for little critters and city folks. <laughs> Melvin, must I go up there and humble myself to Granny? No, you can have another paddling instead. I'm going up there. Ah! So you brung help with you, huh? Well, come on. I'll take you both over. No, no, Granny, we're not here to fight. Tell her, Margaret. I'm here to eat crow. Well, you're out of luck, sister. I'm cooking shipments. <laughs> Yeah, Safe to get out? Of course it is. We left Miss Jane three miles up the road. Hope she don't get hold of no more tonic. I've never seen anything run as fast as that woman. What can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we pursue them, sir? No, running at six miles top speed probably took the edge off her. <laughs> Do you mind having the party here instead of your house? Granny, I've almost given up the notion of having a party at all. Mr. Clampett tells me that you have no more tonic. Got a whole pond full of it. And it's been watered down and run through the filter so it's just right for city folks. Come on in, I'll show you. Oh, what a magnificent spot for a party. We can have hundreds of guests. And you've got the fountain of youth, too, just like you wanted. Folks can just pass by and fill their glasses. Looky here. Ain't that pretty? Here, Countess, try one. You too, old soldier. May I, your ladyship? Oh, I think it will do you a world of good, Humphrey. Thank you, your ladyship. You're most kind. Don't call him an old soldier, Granny. He's just a little past 35. <laughs> to your husband, madam. Which one? The next one. Oh, thank you, my dear Humphrey. Oh, your, your ladyship. <laughs> I'm coming. This party life is too much for me up half the night. Good morning, Granny. Good morning. <laughs> Granny, how can I ever thank you for last night? It was a dandy wedding. The tonic flowed like water. <laughs> and to think that I was there in person when the Countess married her sixth husband. Oh, by the way, the bride and groom up yet? Ain't heard a peep out of them. Well, come on out to the kitchen and have some coffee. Oh, oh good. Thank good you. morning, dear friends. Fabulous wedding party. Well, good morning, Countess. How's the groom this morning? Wonderful. Simply wonderful. <laughs> the kitchen is this way, Countess. Where are you going? To the fountain of youth. <laughs> Yonder comes the groom, and your tonic has sure done wonders for him. <gasps> He's commencing to look 35. <laughs> Well, now, 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.